Greetings, programs, and welcome to the latest episode of Thumb Wars Presents Blistered Reviews. This time around, we're taking a look at the latest game in the long-running Dragon Ball franchise, Dragon Ball Z Battle of Z. Dragon Ball Z games have tended to be at their best when they move away from the conventional in favor of gameplay that brings them more closely in line with the style of fights from the property they're based on. After all, fights in DBZ have long been the definition of over the top, and many series to this day still find themselves measured against Z when it comes to this factor as well. So it only makes sense then that a good DBZ game is one that embraces the propensity of the series to go really big or go home, and in order to do this, a developer is often going to have to take a different approach from most fighting games. In this regards, the first new DBZ game in over two years, Battle of Z, certainly fits the bill, but it's just too bad that some serious flaws get in the way of the fun. The good, interesting and unique concept, diverse and robust roster of characters, strong online play, Decent visuals and audio. The bad. Weak single player mode. Bad AI. Camera. Awkward menu system. No local co-op competitive play. The ugly. The fact that I'm now thrown off when hearing anyone but the Team 4 Star people voice these characters. The concept behind DBZ Battle of Z is actually a fairly simple one. Players assemble a team of four fighters and then go into battle in large closed off arenas against either groups of enemies or powerful individual threats. It's an interesting idea, but it also means that Battle of Z may not be the fighting game fans of the genre are expecting. Indeed, when judged as a pure fighter, Battle of Z comes across incredibly simplistic with its single melee attack button and single key attack button, plus two buttons for special attacks. Even something like the deliberately streamlined Naruto Ninja Storm series presents a more complex take on the fighting game genre than Battle of Z. However, that's because in truth, calling Battle of Z a fighting game at all is something of a misnomer, and the title's really more of a third-person, arena-based action game than it is any kind of 3D fighter. In Battle of Z, a team of four fighters all share the same pool of lives, and each time a fighter goes down, be they player or computer controlled, one of these lives will be spent to resurrect the fallen warrior. The more powerful the individual fighters on a team are, the smaller pool of lives they begin a fight with, and a teammate also has a limited window of around five to six seconds in which they can rouse their fallen teammate without the penalty of a lost life. Once a team is out of lives, if a fighter goes down, computer controlled or otherwise, that's the match. Players will also acquire cards and one-use items, either from winning battles or purchasing them from a number of in-game shops, which can be used to increase a fighter's stats or grant various special attributes like stronger knockback from key attacks or a faster energy regeneration. Battle of Z, then, is a game all about assembling a winning team of warriors and making good use of the combination of their skills. And to that end, the game actually does a good job of making its roster of fighters feel distinct. Characters in Battle of Z come in a number of types, including melee-focused, key-blast-focused, support, i.e. healing, interference, think attack interruptions and damage over time attacks, and various mixtures of these four types. It's a concept the game employs to great effect, and it also allows for different versions of characters like Goku, Trunks, Gohan, and more to legitimately feature different playstyles. 
Thus, for example, assembling a foursome of Kid Gohan, Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, Adult Gohan, and Ultimate Gohan can actually allow for a surprisingly diverse set of abilities when all is said and done. Unfortunately, some problems otherwise seriously undercut what is a rather interesting concept, and it's the game's woefully underwhelming single-player mode that suffers the most as a result. Calling the game's story mode a Cliff Notes version of the DBZ saga is actually giving it too much credit, thanks to an often distinct lack of cutscenes and a bevy of seemingly random story changes, such as Goku and Krillin now being the ones taking on Raditz, instead of Goku and Piccolo, in a fight that does not end with Goku dying. I can sympathize with just how many times developers have been called upon to retell the main four DBZ sagas, but that's still no excuse for how thin and lackluster Battle of Z's story mode ultimately is. If the developers at Art Dink wanted to present an alternate telling of DBZ a la their Madoka Magica Vita title, that would have been one thing, and indeed, I would have even welcomed such. Instead, all the game gives players is a story mode where the story borders on non-existent, and in a world where Bandai's own Ninja Storm series showcases just how good of a job an anime game can do in retelling the story of a series, that is simply not acceptable. Still, ultimately what really holds Battle of Z single-player mode back is its poorly implemented teammate AI. As I said previously, it's clear some real thought was put into making sure the different characters in Battle of Z do not just feel like palette swaps, but a player would not know it from how one's teammates tend to perform when the computer's controlling them. I cannot count the number of times I would go into a battle with three teammates all geared towards healing, only to have minutes or more go by without the computer actually ever bothering to heal anyone. Players can issue orders to computer-controlled teammates, but these are limited to telling them to back off and let players fight alone, or to focus on defense, attack, or cooperative moves. I'd like to say that a simple heal command could have improved the game's single-player mode dramatically, but considering how poor of a job the AI does following the commands already available, I remain dubious. Similarly, computer-controlled teammates seem to rely on random chance when it comes to waking up fallen teammates, and along with their seeming inability half the time to avoid powerful enemy attacks, this can lead to numerous cheap losses during later battles in the game's story mode when Battle of Z seriously begins to ratchet up the difficulty level of its fights. Yes, players can even lose fights without ever suffering a single point of damage against the character they're actually directly controlling, and it can make for some incredibly frustrating encounters. Essentially, skill alone is often not enough in Battle of Z, and instead players will need to waste hours grinding through earlier battles to acquire the currency needed to buy powerful one-use items in order to even have a chance at victory. Note that the game tends to make battles more difficult by throwing endless waves of mooks alongside a powerful boss character, or making players defeat a boss multiple times in a single fight. It's the definition of cheap gameplay design, but players will have to put up with it since of course the only way to unlock the game's full roster of characters for online play is by completing the story mode, supposedly optional side missions and all. To its credit, the game does make some allowances for this failing by having all story missions available in co-op mode, and otherwise nigh unbeatable single-player missions can become a cakewalk with actual humans at the controls of one's teammates. Though even this just helps to highlight how bad the game's enemy AI is, but I digress. Just keep in mind that all joint play is restricted to online only, and indeed the game lacks any form of local multiplayer whatsoever. To be fair, this is understandable considering how much the game's camera struggles at times during solo play, Now I can only imagine what a nightmare split screen would have been to keep track of. Still, I know some will be disappointed not to at least have the option of making a go of the game with a group of friends all gathered in the same room. Regardless, whether playing co-op or competitive, it's when four human players come together that Battle of Z truly shines, and the full potential of its gameplay becomes apparent. Team Battle, Battle of Z's name for its competitive mode, in particular can produce some incredibly chaotic yet fun affairs once eight players are squaring off and a good selection of match types helps offer the game some decent staying power. Players can fight in a standard 4 on 4 brawl where the first team to run out of lives loses, but other options include a scoring mode where taking down a stronger fighter offers more points and reward, and a battle royale where it's every fighter for themselves. Finally, there's Battle of Z's most interesting competitive type, Dragon Ball Grab, where two teams of four must race around an arena in order to find the scattered seven Dragon Balls and prevent opposing players from stealing them once they are acquired. It's an enjoyable diversion, and overall my personal experience with the game's online play saw little in the way of lag or slowdown. When Battle of Z was announced, my first thought was to wonder if the title had started life as something other than a DBZ game before ultimately having the license grafted onto it. The general concept felt like a strange fit for the property to begin with, considering how most major fights in DBZ tend to boil down to a series of one-on-one -on -one affairs. 
Upon actually beginning to play the game, this feeling only persisted, and indeed, if anything, grew stronger and stronger the further I made my way in. The game's camera, for example, works great when everyone's on the ground, but struggles when the action moves airborne. Then there's the oddness of being able to take a team of four Krillins into battle with no endgame explanation, or the fights against swarms of mooks, and of course a story mode that barely bothers to follow along with the series it is based upon. I bring this up mainly because while I do feel that Battle of Z is ultimately a fairly flawed game, it's also one whose basic setup still carries a lot of potential. The thought of a Naruto, Gundam, or One Piece game using the Battle of Z formula as a basis feels like something that could really sing, and even a direct sequel that improves on character AI, gameplay balance, and the camera would not be unappealing. To me, Battle of Z is a lot like the first two DBZ Bodokai games. Interesting attempts that are just not there yet, but if given the chance to grow, could eventually evolve into something special. That's exactly the case of what happened with Bodokai 3, and I'm hopeful that history will repeat itself with Battle of Z 2 or whatever they end up calling it. Because even in its current form, Dragon Ball Z Battle of Z is still the best Dragon Ball Z game to be released in a long time. It's not going to be for everyone, and you'll have to take the bad with the good, but those looking for something off the beaten path or for a good time with the characters of DBZ could do a lot worse than Battle of Z. Score, 6 out of 10, above average. Recommendation, try it out.